And 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 this is this is what I used to call them back in my day, and I wasn't the only one. We called them educated fools. Amen. Because what does it mean? I want you to just understand this analogy. How does it? What sense does it make for you to be so wise about many things, but not be able to understand what it is that you're wise about? That's why you study to show yourselves approved. A workman need not be ashamed so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. So, yeah, the word. Amen. That's why we study. That's why you have to uh, look at. And uh, yeah, when you make comparisons on anything, don't be comparing yourself with nobody. Compare yourself with Jesus Christ and his word. Amen. Let me go on into the scriptures. I think I sufficiently did a background. Uh, uh, yeah, this was a, the, the, the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus Christ was given this discourse. And he was explaining to the people that what they needed to do is so that they could get to heaven. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. And spacious and broad is the way that leads to destruction. I'm going to stop parenthetically right there. Uh-huh. He said, enter through the narrow gate. Now, now, some people say, narrow gate? Lord have mercy. Well, how can people get through a narrow gate? Well, there ain't that many that's going to get through. The Bible says, scarcely shall the righteous enter into the kingdom. Amen. And the reason being is that there's not that many that are willing to travel that way. Oh, my God. <laughs> many are not willing to go the straight and narrow Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> now, that's why it's so narrow, because uh, we're not willing to go there. And Lord have mercy. Let me see. There's something else that I thought I, I want to bring out about that. Mm-hmm. Which is getting spirit. Brought us way to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember I gave you the scripture, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, that tells you why I cannot fail, because I'm trusting in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. Yeah. Notice that God always uh, supports what he says with his own self, his word. And here's something that if you don't follow on um, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, check out what Proverbs 14, 12 and 16, 25 says. Now, I'm going to read that to you. Amen. Because normally I just go ahead and quote it. But the Amplified Bible, some, it says a lot more uh, uh, words than what I would say. And as a matter of fact, if I've quoted it, it probably sounds like... Uh, uh, I was I was quoting from the King James uh, translation of the Bible, but I'm going I'm going to go to Proverbs fourteen twelve, and then I'm going to flip over to uh, Proverbs sixteen uh, twenty five. Proverbs the fourteenth chapter, and that twelfth verse reads this way: There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him lord have mercy thank god for the holy ghost but at the end of it is the way of death lord have mercy now let's go to proverbs 16 25 i want you to stick a pen in what you just heard uh, from me when i read uh verse uh 14 25 this is verse this is proverbs 16 20 uh, i'm sorry when you heard me read from proverbs 14 12 this is proverbs 16 25 there is a way that seems right to a man and peers straight before him. But at the end of it is the way of death. Yeah, that is the same scripture. That is absolutely the same scripture. It's just contained in different chapters and different verses in Proverbs. And what is it telling us? Uh, well, it, it speaks to the question, uh, which way are you going? Amen. If you, if you, if you go your own way, uh, uh, which many people do, uh, that's why you can't many don't travel that 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 narrow way. They go their own way. Well, let me go on and pick that up before I go beyond myself. And, and, and then let me see. Well, let me go back. Let me read Jeff verse 13 again. And we're going to jump right over to 14 because I almost went past myself in through the in and through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and spacious and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. You heard me read that 14, 12 and 16, 25 from Proverbs and many are those who are entering through it. Lord have mercy. But the gate is narrow, contracted by pressure, and the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life. And few are those who find it. Lord have mercy. The, 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 the gate is narrow. The gate to get into the kingdom is narrow, contracted by pressure. Now what kind of pressure would contract that gate? Well, let me see if I can't just say something here by way of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. Many people, many people 
Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Many people are succumbing these days to the pressures of life. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, black black people, black men in America, you're succumbing to the pressure of being a black man in America. A black woman, you're succumbing to the pressure of being a black woman. Black children are succumbing to the pressure of being black children in America. Lord, have mercy. And, and Christians, we're succumbing to being Christians in America. Why? Because there's so much out there that's that's against us there's so much out there trying to lead you on a different path and don't you know that if, if you allow yourself if you are absolutely allow yourself well then you'll end up on that broad way and we already told you that there are many that are traveling on the broad way but there are not that many that are traveling on the narrow way and reason being is because it's just too much pressure for two for us to do so but understand this if you just trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path and pressure there ain't no pressure in that all you got to do is learn how to submit surrender and yield yourself over to the power of the Holy Ghost and become spirit controlled and spirit led amen but it is, it seems like a lot of pressure, and we know what pressure can do to us. Oh my God, many of us that have headaches, that, that be throbbing, and you can feel the pressure. You can feel the pressure. It seems like you're about ready to explode. Lord, have mercy. The gate is narrow, contracted by pressure, and the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life. And few are those who find it. That's why the Bible says, seek God, seek the Lord Jesus, why he yet can be found. Uh huh. And why is he? Why is it so difficult to find him? It seems like it should not be so difficult to find the Lord. And the reason why I say it seems like it should not be so difficult to find him. If any man, well, my God, when you are born again, when you are born again, baptized, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, God's Holy Spirit comes and indwells you. And, then, and and when he comes in and dwells you, he lives in you and you live in him. Now, the Bible lets me know that we've been we've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. So what we need to do is learn how to let that light that is within us to shine forth. And when you do that, uh, you will allow people to see the Christ within you and they will glorify the father that's in heaven. And the reason why if people are finding a hard time in finding the way is because they don't see Christ in the believers oh my god yeah many of us are walking around here we're naming the name of jesus christ but we ain't doing what we need to be doing that so that the light can come forth from from within us and how do i know that to be true we write in matthew the seventh chapter we're gonna just go down a few verses and we're gonna be in john 14 before long oh my god god is taking us to the place right now uh no, Ma matthew matthew seventh chapter starting at that 21st verse y'all this is what it reads not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many, watch this, y'all. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name. And then I. We still in Jesus, still in his discourse. This is the Sermon on the Mount, y'all. Then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. And what was you doing? You were on that broad way. What you were doing was you was acting like that church in Revelations known as the church of Laodicea. Uh-huh. Jesus Christ, the word of God says that uh, God had, he had some things to say about that church of Laodicea. Yeah, there were some good things that they was done. And, and, and just let me uh, paraphrase and isolate the text, if you will. There's some good things that they had done. And, and yeah, so it's admirable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make note of that. But then there's something that I got against you. 
Oh, my God, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. And what does that mean? You're you straddling the fence. And what do you mean, Minister Weathersby, straddling the fence? Well, you got one foot in the church and the other foot in the club, one foot in Christ and the other foot in the world. And you, oh, my God. And the Bible says that a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. That seems to be double minded. And this is what this is what God said in his word. He says, you know, and because you're lukewarm and you're neither hot, which is with me or cold against me, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Uh huh. That, that's why it's, it's tough. It's tough for many people to enter into the kingdom because that broad way has many a folk on there. Many a folk who don't even think that they're on the broad way or on the broad way. That person that we just read here in the, in the 21st through the, uh, 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 uh yeah. Yeah, that, that Matthew, the seventh chapter, that 21st through, I just lost my place. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. The 21st through the uh, uh, 23rd verse. Mm hmm. He thought, they thought they was doing uh, work <laughs> on God's behalf that would get them in the kingdom. So, what did they think they was doing, Arthur? They thought they was working their way into the kingdom. And there are many folk out here that think they're working their way in the kingdom. But I'm here to tell you that is not the way to go. So, uh, uh, when I ask the question, which way are you going? If you're going on, on trying to go to the kingdom by way of working your way, you cannot do that. Why? Because it says, by grace that you are saved, not of works that men might boast. It is a gift of God that you are saved. And how do we know it's a gift of God? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. That's why we know it was a gift from God. And you cannot work your way in the kingdom. I don't care what kind of works you do. Now, what can what should happen if you are operating by your faith? And if you are operating in the will of God, then your faith will generate works. Your uh the the the, the, the epistle of James makes note of that. Uh, the epistle of James, and I think I'm going to go in and pull that up for a fact. Let me go to James and see if I cannot locate, and I know I can. Uh, amen. Let's go. Let's go to James and 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 pull that scripture that we want to uh, show you uh, uh, concerning. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord have mercy. I tell you, God, He's good and He's good all the time. I thank the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's see, let's see here, uh, yes, Lord, mm -mm -mm. I think it's the third, it's the third chapter, James, Arthur. Mm -mm -mm. let's see, amen, let me see, let me put down the the rec yeah, let me put down that iPad. That was messing me up. I'm trying to work with we going through my Bible. I got the iPad in one hand. Lord have mercy, Arthur. Go on, find what you're looking for. Now let's see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm mm mm. Uh, let's see, Arthur. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna come upon what we're looking for. Amen. We just have to take our time and read. That's what we have to do. Uh, yeah, we just have to take our time and read the word. Amen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes, yep, 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 yep. All right, we're taking our time. And you know, while we Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. We're almost there, I believe. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, uh, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Okay, where is it? I just thought I had it. Well, let's see this. Let's start at. 
Let's go with um, the second chapter of James. And let's start verse 17. It says, So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds and action of obedience to back it up by itself is destitute of power, inoperative, dead. That's it right there. But someone will say to you then, you say you have faith and I have good works. Now you show me your alleged faith apart from any good works if you can and I by good works.